Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript and today we are going to be discussing the date object and the math object so let's get started so let's say you want to be able to fetch the day or the time or the month or the year that well is today well in order to do this we can access a predefined object or in other words an object that already exists in JavaScript and we don't have to create an object of our own so that's beautiful so in order to do this just create a nice variable I'll call it I don't know startup time and the reason why I'm gonna call it startup time is because when you use the date object it always fetches the information off of your computer as soon as the browser loads so that's the date and time to the very second that it takes it from and set that equal to new date all right, so now when it loads, the startup time will now just, you know, fetch all the information off your computer, everything that it'll need. Uh, and uh, that's about it. That you, you just create a variable and boom. So I'll show you how to get certain elements out of it, certain by using methods. So let's let's say you want to write out Today is, and geez, I don't know if you guys can hear it, the street sweeper is really loud. Goodness. And what you can do is, I'm actually going to copy and paste this, is every time you want to use the date object or one of the methods of the date object, just like before with the atom object in the previous video when we were creating our own objects, we have to use these objects that we created ourselves, so it's going to be the start of time. I don't want to keep writing that because that's so long. But I'll just paste it here and I'll put a dot followed by and when we write out the month or excuse me when we write out the date we usually go with the month first so I'll put down get month followed by parentheses now the month what it does is it'll give you a number from 0, zero to 11 uh, depending on what month of the year it is so what you'll want to do is actually add one because for an example if it's December you don't want the number 11 to pop up because people think you mean November so I'm gonna have a plus one there followed by a slash followed by and I'll paste it again and to get the day what you do is type in get date and that will return the zero or the excuse me the one through 31 depending what month it is. And I'll throw in another slash. And I'll put in startup time dot and then get not year but full year. And uh, this should give us the date and time as soon as it refresh the page. Uh, shoot. Get full year. Oh, whoops. Parentheses. Of course. There it is. <laughs> January 12th. Today is January 12th, 2012. Quite a few days before I ever start uploading any videos. As you can see, I'm doing a lot of videos ahead of time. Uh, and this is the proof. Yeah, I can't fake that. Well, unless I changed my computer's time, but I'm not doing that. Now, for the next thing I want to show you when it comes to actual time... I want to go to the next line, so I'll just create a break tag. And do I have this semicolon? Yes, I do. Ah, oh, this is too long. So the time is. Then I'll paste that again. And then I'll type in dot get hours. Now, because we can't really differentiate between AM and PM, what they do is they use 24 hour time, also known as military time, just because they use it. Pretty much anybody that, any kind of job that requires going over time zones use 24 hour time, not just the military, but whatever. Uh, so it will return a value from 0 to 23. You can use a series of if statements if you'd like to see if it's above 
what you could do is you can use an if statement that says if it's above 12, subtract 12, and then at the end of the statement put PM. So you could do something like that, but I'm not going to do that because that would take just a little bit too much time. Not much time, but that's what you would do. You would check to see if, the, if this is above 12, and then you would just subtract 12 if it is. Uh, then uh, a colon, I believe that's what we use for time. If I don't know that, that's sad. Then next would be uh, get minutes. Mm. Followed by, and that's usually what all we use, right? But I'll show you the seconds, anyways. Dot get seconds. Now that should work. It's 127, so it should give me like, it should give me 1327, I think. And it does, because it's 1, it's 1 p.m. right now, so 1327 in 19 seconds. If I refresh the page, as you can see, seven seconds passed, and you know, it, the seconds keeps passing every time I refresh the page. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much your date object. There's a few others, but there are so many different things for every different thing that I can't possibly show you everything just because it's so much. But if you want to, just look up the date object on Google and you'll find a bunch of other different things that you can use. But this is essentially how you use the date object. Now I'm going to throw in a, another brick tag as I show you a little bit of the math. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, it's been a, I, I've actually took a break for a few days since I made my last video, which was the custom objects. Uh, so I'm, because it's winter break for me, and I kind of slacked off, I guess you could say. Or it was winter break, but then I just slacked off, and then school and all that stuff. So I kind of got behind, I'm sorry. Okay, so the math object, you do not need to do something like this. You do not need to create the object. You don't need to say new math with semi, or excuse me, parentheses afterwards. What you can do is just, I'll just create a simple variable and set it equal to... I don't know. I'll make it negative 16 first because of what I'm going to do. But then what you can do is type in document.write and then you can access the math just like we did in here in this document write. We accessed this object and then this method. We'll just use the math object dot uh, then well I'll show you a bunch of different examples in order to make an absolute value of a number like here you just type in abs for absolute and then you throw the variable in there so when I refresh the page positive 16 should show up and it does there's positive 16 uh, so now I'll make it not that anymore um, let's see here there's square root I know that one that's that's one we use a lot in programming and stuff. In programming classes, not actual programming. You most likely won't really use this. And there's your four, so it gives you the square root uh, of that. And there's there's quite a few. Uh, let's go 16.4 and well, let's round this guy, right? So you, you Yeah, let's round this. Now rounding, when it comes to like game mechanics or whatever, you would most likely be using something like this. And when you round it, you get 16. But if it's 16.6, .6, let's see what it rounds to. Rounds back up to 17. There's actually two different round methods other than the round that will force it either up or down. So since I already have it higher, let's do the floor. The floor will always round it down. So now it's back to 16. Now if I make this 16.4 and use the ceiling, and for ceiling you just type in C-E-I-L, it should go up to, back up to 17, even though it's 16.4, so kind of weird, but hey, it works. You can also do a max and minimum. So if you have var y equals 20, what you can do is use the 
max. And what it will do is it will return the greater of the two values that you put in. So it should return me that 20. So if I refresh the page, there's my 20. I can then type in minimum, or just min, and it will return the smaller of the two values. So if I refresh the page, there's the 16.4. And as you can see, it, it, it will also work with decimals. I just haven't really shown that yet. Um, and there's, uh, oh, oh yeah, power. Since I'm doing two of these, I might as well show you power. So with, so with power, you just type in pow. Yeah, pretty cool. And what it will do in here is it will take whatever the first number is and set it to the power of the next. So if I make the x, let's say, 2, and the y, 3, that should be 2 to the third power, or 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So, oh, there it is, so it works. So the power is x to the y power, or the first parameter to the second pra parameter. And there's a whole bunch of others. You can do uh, cosine, you can do cosine, uh, sine, tangent, you know, you can also do arc cosine, which you just put an A in front of. And just so you know, um, A cosine of negative 1, yes, is pi. Arc cosine of negative 1 is pi. I, I kid you not. Let me actually try it. Just because I'm so, so certain about that. You refresh the page, and, oh, there it is, 3.14159265 or 2653. It becomes a 4 in your calculator. I just have the first memorized. Yeah, a co um, arc cosine negative 1 is pi. And you can also refer to pi, like, I think you can. Math pi. Actually, I think, I think both of these have to be capitalized, the p and the i. So if I refresh the page, yep, it's still there. And uh, yeah, and if you want to learn any others, just, uh, just Google the math object and it should show you. You should be able to find all of them. Okay, I dragged this video out pretty long. Uh, especially since there really wasn't much in this one. But yeah, the rest of this, of the object series, of this little mini series, should be easy because creating our own objects is by far the hardest thing. So the rest of the objects, don't fret. It, it's going to be easy, don't worry. So uh, until next time, I'll, I'll see you again.